Hi, this is Zubin Abayana from A to Z Graphology and welcome to this video. I am going to explain to you how to improve the performance in an examination. It doesn't matter whether you are in the 5th grade or graduation. I can help you to understand a certain mindset that may allow you to progress and actually enjoy examinations. A bit of my story before we continue. I have been a failure and found it mostly difficult whenever I was trying to study and perform the examinations, especially during my school life. From around the 5th standard onwards till the 10th, 11th and even the 12th grade, I found it extremely difficult to do well in my studies. Yes, I did try to study hard and I used to put in a lot of effort, but yet the examinations and the mere mention of a test was frightening for me. After I learned the graphology techniques or certain techniques which I am going to show here, I was able to not only raise myself up from the point of failure but also pass very well in distinction. Where I was in school life a failure, in my graduation I was in distinction getting above 70% in my examinations. If you are a student who is not doing well in the exams and find it difficult to score well, this topic would be good for you. If you are a student who is getting high grades, this topic can yet help you because it could probably reduce the stress while studying so that you can enjoy life anyway and yet perform better. So let's jump into certain topics which I have learned in Graphology and I hope that it brings you benefit. There are two concepts in graphology and they depend on the stroke direction. These are two strokes found in graphology. One is called the flexor and the other one is called the extensor. Flex means to pull in. Flexor happens when I flex my muscle. When I flex my muscle, I get a downward stroke. When I extend my hand, when I extend my fingers, I get a extensor stroke. A simple observation in graphology about which direction and what muscle represents the direction. On a paper, when I write a flexor, it represents something that's coming towards me. And on a paper, when I write an extensor, it represents something that goes away from me. Now, I don't know how everybody writes. Some people write in a standard way where the hand position is like this. And some people write it the other way around, where their hand is on top and they write from the below point of angle. So this video is for people who write with this posture. If you are writing with this posture, maybe there's a different way of dealing with this knowledge. Please connect with me personally so that you don't get confused with this one and the way you write. This video is for those who write with this posture. Now onwards, flexor is when we pull down and it represents a stroke that comes towards us, our body. An extensor is a stroke that represents something that goes away from the body. There are many concepts in human life that deal with this duality. Duality means opposites. Opposites means going in, going out and intake, outtake. When you eat food, it's a flexor. When you release the energy, it's an extensor. You earn money, that's a flexor. You spend money, it's an extensor. Now coming to the point of this video, when you study, you are having an intake. The knowledge is coming towards you. When you're giving an examination, it is an extensor, means you're expressing the knowledge. The knowledge is moving away. So here is study 
and here is exam this is extremely important for you to understand study is intake exam is outtake do not try to mix these two it is like trying to breathe in and breathe out at the same time it is virtually impossible to do that and don't even try same way when you're studying you're just focused on getting knowledge in when you're doing an examination you're just focused on expressing now let me ask you one thing when you were in the first grade or in the kindergarten didn't you feel a bit better in performance and didn't you fare well in that grade why is it so that a student in the first standard is able to perform much better in the examinations compared to the students later on is it because the subject is easy it's not for that child at that age the subject is just as tough as a fifth standard child going in fifth standard so what's the difference you see when you came back home when you were just in the first standard that's around 5 to 6 years old that time your mom or dad or somebody at home asked you to say what you had learned from school so in the school you learned about humpty dumpty and you came home and repeated the nursery rhyme you learned a b c d and you came home and you expressed it so there was a balance of intake and outtake there was a ability to let go equally to the intake therefore when the exam came it didn't feel much like an exam in fact you didn't bother about it but as you go higher in grades and the subjects become a bit complicated most parents don't want to be around the child when they study because of course that algebra geometry is a headache and when we when we as parents look at those textbooks we feel very relieved that we are not in that difficulty so your child is going to school studying 8 hours a day 8 hours of intake when he comes home there is nobody to express to if he is going to tuitions or if he is going to extra classes there also he is going to intake so approximately 10 hours of intake now i am sure that when this student goes to friends and tries to explain what is the topic which they understood today in algebra geometry or some uh, science subject or even history none of his friends are going to be interested because they all want to play hang out chill out so where is the child going to express studies is here where we are in intake is happening an exam is outtake throughout the day he has just been eating you could say intaking the knowledge possibly the first time he would ever express that knowledge is directly in the examinations how do you think he is going to perform how do you think you are going to perform it's like me telling you you have to eat food for 3 months not go to the washroom for 3 months and at the end of this you will get 3 hours to go to the washroom it's going to be a mess that exact mess is what happens to the brain and the entire body when you have to go to exam and you have to express 3 to 4 months worth of knowledge in just 3 hours humanly it's impossible but people still do it and then it comes to a a bit of a tricky situation in the exam hall normally the, it is a comfortable situation there's fan there's good lighting the teacher for once is nice to you and she is happy to help you out if you want extra paper to write or if you need a glass of water everything is given to you in absolute comfort uh, an exam examination hall is actually very comfortable to sit in but yet why do you sweat and i have seen people not sweating casually profuse sweating happens especially during the exam i have seen people sweating from the palms of their hand isn't it strange you are in the perfect condition where the temperature is very cool and nice and it's given you're given all the comforts but yet you are acting like as if you've run a marathon do you feel strange that you always feel like rushing to the washroom only during the examination and once the exam is over your stomach and your bowel movement everything seems okay so you're sweating you feel like going to the washroom what's the body trying to tell you 
the body is trying to express. Now, because of the high pressure situation, it doesn't know whether to express through the fingertips, through the skin or through the digestive system. The body is confused. When the body is confused, you know that even if you learnt the knowledge well, the release or the expression of knowledge is not going to happen. So now what do you do? All you have to do is just balance the intake and outtake of information. If you can eat three times a meal a day, you go to the washroom at least twice, at least thrice, correct? There's a balance. Same way, if you are going to study or intake knowledge for five hours, you must have an equivalent way of expression. So if you're a student watching this, all you have to do is go to your parents or somebody around you and tell them, I'm going to explain to you things that you may not understand. If you understand, good. If you don't understand, it's okay. But just try to explain to them daily whatever you have studied. It doesn't matter whether you're wrong or right. All that matters is expression. As you gain momentum for expressing, you will be able to perform better expression. If you are able to express well, finally when the exam comes, the expression won't be a problem. All will be the problem is how much you remember. And that can be anyway done with better studies. So, balance your intake and outtake, express as much as you intake the knowledge and see whether you are able to increase your performance. If in case nobody is around you, if you are just staying in a hostel and nobody is there to guide you, you can take a mirror and start talking to the mirror. If you can face yourself while you are expressing, you can face anybody. The I will leave a link in the description below and it will help you to connect with me personally so that we can understand your handwriting in a much more in-depth manner. This is Zubin Mavana from A2Z Graphology and all the best.